Jonathan was doing his room at the time when Charlie came to the door. I heard the doorbell ring and I go to the door and open the door and there was Charlie and everything and with his bike and um, he was asked if John could come out. So I go back to the room to see where John was in this cleaning process and he says, Mom, is the room clean enough? And I told him, no, John, this room is not clean. <laughs> so I go back out and I tell Charlie, he's still cleaning, it'll be a little bit. And so then John comes running out of the room, Mom, is it clean enough, is it clean enough, come check, come check. And I go back to the room and it still wasn't clean enough. But then I told him, um, John, you could go ahead, you can leave, it's, it's clean enough. But it really wasn't. <laughs> and um, I walked him outside and then looking at Charlie's bike, of Charlie just gotten a new bike mm. for his birthday, which is in November, November 1st. And I looked at um, Charlie's bike and I had just, my sister had just purchased the bike for my, for my Jonathan, because his birthday was 22 days away. He was gonna turn 10. And I knew I couldn't afford to buy him and his twin sister a bike. And my sister had went and she had found this bike and um, she gave it to him as his birthday gift. Yeah. So and it was a happy moment for you in, in in that morning. It was, it was. Tell me about Jonathan. Jonathan was very happy, very loving, you know. Um, what I remember the most is his beautiful, beautiful eyes and his wet kisses. You know, he kiss you, I gave him wet kisses and stuff. That was Jonathan. Um, just a very happy boy, he loved playing basketball. That was his favorite, you know. He was gonna grow up and be a professional basketball player. He was also gonna be an architect, you know. Because <laughs> he likes to build things and make things and, and he was just very helpful. Jonathan was one that wanted to make everybody happy. You know, he tried to see how it could be to where everybody was getting what they wanted, you know. A special kid. Yeah, he really was. And how about Charlie? Charlie's house was the house that had the swimming pool. And so, of course, all the kids wanted to mm. go to Charlie's house where they can get the swimming pool because we didn't have a swimming pool. <laughs> Pretty special, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, and he, and he had all the, um, by him being an only child that was at home, the other, his um, brother and sister, they were grown and married already. Um, so he had all the latest, you know, games and Nintendos and stuff. So the kids liked to go over there oh, and hang out with him and yeah. stuff, you know. Which is um, why when the boys didn't, when, when Jonathan didn't come home in time for dinner, you know, I um, told my daughter, you know, call Maria's house and stuff, which is Charlie's mother, and tell John it's time to come home. And I just knew he'd be over there playing or doing something. And it, the phone went to the voicemail and stuff, so he left a message. And then it wasn't until Maria came to the house. His mother, Charlie's mother. Charlie's mother, mother came to the house. And that's when I realized that there was something wrong because I knew that, you know, John was at their house. Of course, John is with Charlie. Yeah. And Maria came over to the house to get Charlie. So I knew something was wrong. They wouldn't be out, you know. And John's always home for dinner. He knows dinner's at five o'clock and he is, he comes running home to make sure he's there in time. So I asked Maria if I could ride with her. So we went to a couple of their friends' house together. Um, you know, we decided we're going back home and we're gonna call the police because we know our kids. And when I called the police and when they finally showed up, um, my sisters had then showed up at the house too, but they had no idea. And then I told them, you know, John's missing. Um, by the time when the police finally got there, me and my son Alton and my nephew um, Arthur, we got in the car because my son Alton was gonna take us to some places that they know that the boys frequent and we were going different places, but then it started to rain. And when it started to rain, that's when I just, I knew, I just knew that my son was dead. So my family was waiting for the news to come on, and that's when it came on TV, saying that they found their, the boy's body. Mm. And they were, my family was in the, um, they were in the family room, and I was back in my bedroom, in bed, and all I heard was this screaming, you know. Um, they were just screaming, and so I just started screaming, because I just, you know, I knew it was like confirmation. And it's just so hard. Um, and then um, John's father came into the bedroom, and he said, you know, our baby's dead, our baby's dead. And I, when the police came to the house to tell us, 
I remember, you know, my sister told me that she was she was really upset because of how the kids found out and how we all found right. out and stuff. Um, and then the police they told me that they were they were they think they were murdered. And I said, well, you know, because my mind could not comprehend that. You know, I said, what would make you say that? And um, he said, I don't think they could have done that to themselves. And I'm still thinking, no, no, you must be mistaken. They, they must. Have. I'm still thinking in my mind they, they drowned. Um, and I guess part of me really didn't want to know. I didn't really want to know all the details. And I know I didn't want to know the details. Um, Cause it was too hard just dealing with the fact that he was dead, let alone, and then telling me somebody actually killed him on purpose. You know, purposely killed him, and then. Um, Maria, she would come to me and she said, you know, she's the one that would let me know what was going on. It was just easier, I guess, for me to hear it from her. And she would say, Melina, you have to know this. You have to know this, and this is what happened. And so she would tell me some things and stuff, you know. Um, and she said, you know, that the, you know, like the boys were molested, and 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 they, you know, and she said that there was burn marks. It looks like burn marks and all this stuff, and it was just. It was just too much. It was just so much to handle, to, to even think about, because I didn't want to think about it. Right. You know, I just didn't want to. I thought they were just going to go out for a bike ride. I didn't know until later that after everything had happened, my son, Alton, my oldest son, he told me that the plan was, Charlie was going to go with Alton and Jonathan and all the boys. They were all going to go together on this adventure, and that's what they called it, an adventure. and. Um, but Alton had asked Charlie to wait until he got back home because he plays the violin and he had a concert that, that morning. Mm -hmm. And so he wasn't there when Charlie came. And that's when Charlie left with, um, with Jonathan. But evidently they had went to rallies to get themselves a hamburger and to get that bigger, better burger meal. And so I know he had a wonderful meal because my son Jonathan loved to eat. <laughs> and, um, but they also stopped by a flower shop. Um, and the florist told the police that the little black boy came inside while the little white boy stayed outside with the bikes and asked, you know, how much it cost for a rose because they wanted to get a rose for their mother. And then they left and they continued their bike ride. I am so thankful that that we're still here because I didn't think that I'd be able to survive um, when all of this happened. I want to find out the last words of my son, you know, if he asked for me. Our boys, they were able to see this and they, they're looking down on us and I know they're proud of us and I know they're, ha they're happy.